chcemy tu z wami być. Dzień dobry. E, znowu. Dla mnie to sesja szczególna i to będzie ostatni kawałek po angielsku, gdzie Dawid może mówić wieloma językami od, od czeskiego przez włoski, niemiecki i pewnie jeszcze kilka. I chociaż się nie przyznaję, to twierdzę, że on dużo rozumie po, angiel po polsku. Ale... I, I, I even talk Polish, but you need to give me a couple of beers tonight. <laughs> so, so tonight probably we'll, we'll have a chance to, uh, to listen David, David's Polish. W każdym razie to, co ode mnie, tak trochę od serca, to tyle, że to jest moja druga sesja z Dawidem. Pierwsza była, gdy zaczynałem przygodę w ogóle w używaniu wszelkich rozwiązań VMware, wtedy to było Virtual Infrastructure. I pierwszą sesję razem mieliśmy na VMware, gdzie w 2008 roku. Przyznam szczerze, że stres był o tyle większy, że siedzieli po drugiej stronie Amerykanie albo ludzie ze świata generalnie, natomiast dużo Amerykanów. To była moja pierwsza sesja taka oficjalna w obcym języku, na obcym terenie, pierwszy raz w Stanach, więc Dawid był moim takim gwarancją, że nawet jak zemdleje, to się wszystko uda. Krzysztof nie chciał prezentować, ale ja pójść go. Ok, więc zacznijmy do angielsku teraz. Może Dawid Uh, you can cover the introduction. Sure. So what we have prepared for you, or shall I take the microphone so everybody can hear me as well in the end. Um, so what we have prepared is basically two topics and um, Krzysztof already mentioned software defined data center is this theme. Um, however, we know how many of you guys have more than 100 VMs? Okay, how many have more than 500? Okay, how many have more than 1000? Okay, well, then we have definitely an audience that might be interested beyond what we do with hyperconverged infrastructure appliance with VSpec Blue, but depending, even if you are a big one, you might be interested. Um, I think we jointly know that this solution is aimed for smaller workloads, not saying small, but smaller. It scales greatly, so we will touch a little bit on that. And we will show what EMC is and VMware OEM in this case. We are on original equipment manufacturer for VMware um, to bring that solution to you, how it can look. The other topic, which will not be the primary, but everybody who was still up with 1000 VMs and more, um, I encourage you to come to our VLAB um, to explore it, to talk to Karol Bogunjevic, to talk to Grzeg, to talk to anybody at EMC, including myself today. Um, if you want to learn more in detail, because the focus will be on VSpec Blue and the integrated solutions we have there. And last but not least, uh, we brought you some gadgets, apart from the gadgets that uh, already Maciej announced and Krzysztof mentioned, is um, during EMC World at, uh, in Las Vegas in May, we released a lot of components that you can use for free. Okay? So we have a lot of gadgets, especially if you are interested in technology and the Ember user groups typically are, you can explore, you have no limitations except don't use it at home for production. Okay? Good. And there is where I'm handing over to Grzeg once more who will walk us through a little bit of the um, overarching topic around software defined. Okay. <clears throat> so I'd like you probably uh, all have seen this slide uh, because it's a typical slide and repeated over and over. Uh, however, uh, I put this slide into this presentation because it tells me much more than software defined data center. I mean, uh, I wanted to uh, give you an example. If you look at your IT services today, uh, IT became commodity. I mean, not only servers become commodity, not only virtual machines become commodity, but also a platform, I mean infrastructure as a service, is finally becoming a commodity. Therefore, uh, you are no longer secured with your services as a business partner, because commodity just uh, removes this, uh, this uh, link to infrastructure. Basically, uh, I think personally, and this is also a VMware's message, that uh, IT can be a partner for, for, for the business when it plays in app application level. So 
the business depends on application, not on uh, hardware, network, and so on. To stay focused on pro a proper layer, I would say, we need to get prepared to new application world. I mean, probably many of you have some silos, I guess, like, uh, for example, Oracle silos or SQL silos. Uh, and I really believe, because of my experience from the market is that many of you, many of our customers, or our joint customers, tells me the story, you know, this is all about um, virtualization, but for example, I have two Oracle da databases due to licensing reason or anything else. But uh, this uh, situation leaves and is secure until somebody came and tell, you know, I can do it totally different way. I mean, let's go from typical classic silos to atomic level, uh, to atomic model of uh, the services. And to give you an example in, from real, not IT life, uh, I would like you to consider uh, liquid gas fueling. I mean, uh, five years ago, or maybe two years ago, uh, Polish car drivers could use, could leverage much more cheaper fuel like, uh, pet, uh, sorry, uh, propan, propan gas uh, for, for the cars. But nobody could imagine then uh, self-service on the, uh, during the fueling uh, on the petrol station. I mean, uh, there was only a personal-based uh, solution to fill up your car. Today, most of, most of petrol stations gives you a possibility to tank your car with liquid gas uh, by yourself. And it's not important that you can do it. It's not your demand, probably. It's probably it doesn't matter for you if you can or cannot do it yourself. It's all about breaking barriers to deliver it, to help the petrol business make it cheaper. This is the example I used because I really believe that someone can, um, from development or from business, can come uh, and say, you know, you can reinvent your business model of IT, you, you can reinvent your services again because of new uh, new cloud era and new cloud possibilities. That's why I w uh, I, I'd like to tell you that from my perspective, to achieve this target, you need to be a partner in, in the process from uh, business demand through design, test, and uh, maintenance, uh, production maintenance. Uh, as IT, to do it, you need automation, and to do automation, you need simplicity everywhere. That's why we invented EvoRail, which we probably uh, know anyhow, which is the framework for hyperconverged infrastructure. By the way, uh, is there anybody who can tell the difference between hyperconverged uh, infrastructure or uh, Hyper, how to say? Our hyper, you know, all this hyper. Hyper, hyper? Block? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, because the. the, the um, I just lost my word uh, about this, but hyper converged infrastructure is something like all stack from up to the end, with, uh, with storage, with networking. There is another kind of infrastructure focused only on uh, computing services. I, sorry, I don't remember the words, <laughs> so a uh, kind of mistake. But the way uh, the word hyperconverged means really that you for, you are forgetting about the infrastructure and it is totally simplified. That's why it can be and to do that you need scalability, you need fully orchestrated deployment. Uh, and resilient infrastructure to reduce costs. It's like an appliance, right? Yeah. The idea behind that. So if you buy a tablet, let's say from Apple or Samsung, you're not buying the CPU, the memory, and uh, the connectivity, but you are buying a device that is built for a purpose. The same is here the case. We have built something that serves the service that you deliver applications in the end. And you don't care about like, is the box blue, red, green, whatever. And you, you don't think about it because your business. 
uh, your customer internally don't, uh, that doesn't think about it. Uh, so this is uh, Evo Rail. Uh, it will be covered by David um, in details in special uh, special offering called uh, Vspecs Blue from EMC because uh, I will tell you how we sell this solution. But before that, uh, so just to remind, it, it consists of uh, hardware and CPU uh, CPU um, compute resources, uh, Vsphere Enterprise Plus, Virtual Sun, which will be uh, covered by Cormac today in details, and Evo Rail, Rail Engine. And believe me or not, this Evo Rail Engine you will see in uh, David's, dem David's demo, uh, probably uh, five years old child could, uh, could provide a virtual machine for you if you want. So let's go to one more important thing. Uh, so I told you how we deliver it, and we deliver a framework Qualified partner, which by the way EMC is one of the one of the most important partner here, deliver the hardware, and uh, we have a chance to, as a customer, to get simplicity, single uh, single part number, single device, or and single point of contact because uh, the partner is supporting whole solution from uh, hardware to the uh, top of the top of the top level of this stack. So we, we are a software company as VMware. We don't produce hardware, EMC does, and EMC does it uh, really well in this specs below. And we deliver all solution um, like you've right. The most important part for you, if you consider such approach, is that finally you can use uh, already owned vSphere enterprise license uh, and to lower the cost of this appliance. So, there is a way to simplify your infrastructure and not to uh, not to lo lose your current install base. This is high, this was highly demanded by uh, our customers, and we've done it finally. So I encourage you to look at the demo, to look uh, what David has to show in this special edition, which I really like, uh, Vspecs Blue, and I hope we will invite Carol to do some demos as well. So David, sure. let's go. Thank you. So the demo will come up in a moment, but before we do that, um, I would like to introduce you what we add as EMC with vSpecs Blue, because um, just taking the VMware OEM program wouldn't make a difference, right? Um, we would be as everybody else in the market. But we have really try to think strongly about that and what um, Grzeg was just explaining is Evo Rail is the idea to put infrastructure simplified and to get everything together easy, quick um, into one system but obviously you don't get one system if you buy an appliance you get a redundant setup of four nodes in one appliance and this is independent if you buy it from EMC or somebody else because this is the design principle Similar like uh, Google with Android, they give um, the, the customer um, or the, the developers of hardware um, some specifications that they need to stick with. Um, so just to give you a little bit of an idea, because this is one of the differences I think EMC can offer in the market is, we started five years ago with this monolithic V-block approach, converged infrastructure, and for all those customers in the room or who are operating more than 1,000 VMs, um, that might be something you want to look at. I'm meeting more and more customers in Eastern Europe um, that I'm visiting on a regular basis. In Czech Republic, I was just uh, last this week um, and talking to a customer who originally was a little bit like, you know, we might not want that. But more and more customers don't want to buy, um, a, uh, you know, the engine, the wheels, the steering wheel for the car. They want to buy a car and they want to drive fast. Okay, and of course we can do fast. Um, and then we have additional approaches from VSpecs reference architecture down to the hyper-converged approach, down to VxRack, which was announced at uh, EMC World as a combination of this appliance growth, scale out um, idea. So let's look a little bit closer to what we are looking at a lot of times in data centers, right? Um, there is an environment that you would like uh, to set up and you have a lot of gear, right? 
you have network switches, you have disk systems, you have cables, you need to do everything. Everything arrives at a different week. Um, you're waiting until you can connect it, and this is a lot of pain, typically. And this is exactly the idea of an appliance approach is you get the appliance, you rack it, you stack it, um, you have like 15 minutes to deploy it and it's running. What's inside the appliance? There are four nodes, as mentioned already. Um, depending on which node you choose, you can have a little bit more memory, then we call it the performance node. Um, and basically there's network connectivity, there's vSAN inside, we have been hear hearing that already. Um, obviously 10 gigabit Ethernet and a couple of disks to provide you with storage space. So this is a simplified or like a kind of overview um, how many uh, DIMMs are in there depending on the model. I simplified that to avoid talking about all the specs because in the end of the day you shouldn't care. The typical use case is for one appliance up to 100 standardized VMs um, or 250 VDI desktops. This is how it scales. If you need more, you add another one, right? Obviously. So this is what you set up. Um, this is what you get. It's a very straightforward approach. The idea is don't care about the hardware, but care about that you can deploy quickly a new system, provide new infrastructure um, to the environment, and as um, so, so to run quickly. So you connect through the top of the rack switch, you get the browser up, you put in IP address, gateway, um, Active Directory credentials and things like that. Uh, what should be the vCenter? Um, what should be the EMC Blue Manager IP? And then you are running. So that is what Krishik already showed you. Is um, you have vSphere, vSAN in there, and on top of that, that's the big difference when you get it from EMC. Um, you have a specific vSpecs Blue Manager. And what is this vSpecs Blue Manager for? It helps you to connect and extend what you can do with that system. And that's what I want to show you already in a demo because I was talking already enough on, on slides. So we have prepared a little demo. Um, and in fact, last week I was able in that VLAB um, to deploy a session on that um, and it was running. Um, but uh, this week, uh, the team told us we are reviewing the lab and uh, we need to uh, do a new one, so it's not available at the moment. But you can look at components that are part of vSpecs Blue solution and learn as well. You can use it as well outside vSpecs Blue, obviously. So this is the standard EvoRail interface, but if you look um, when you deploy a new appliance, on the top right-hand corner, you see an EMC logo, wow. But that's not the magic, right? The magic comes when we come to that point that is not the VM or Evo Rail anymore, but it's integrated into the interface. So what happens in that configuration, as I mentioned already, you provide the necessary network parameters that you need, the credentials um, and the passwords, obviously. Um, that's not a lot. I was even asked by a customer, like, you know, this process takes 15 minutes up and running. Can we even provide this information as a file so I don't need to fill it out in this GUI? Yes, you can, okay? So if you feel like this is not automated and not simple enough, yes, it's even possible to upload the file. So the last piece, and, and this is the kind of like difference to any other appliance that is out, out there based on EvoRail, is that you have this special vSpecs blue management piece connected with this little robot. Um, when the validation process is confirmed, okay, we have all the credentials, and this is accelerated. So this is the advantage for the session that you are not getting bored. Um, this typically takes up to 15 minutes, where in fact you have like the initialization, the building, um, the configuration, and hooray, we are there. We can connect to the, v to the appliance, and um, first of all, it looks like the same as all the time, right? But now, you will see in a moment already, um, that there is something different. Um, you have integrated into this interface the EMC vSpecs Blue management. Meaning that, first of all, you have a dashboard. 
with the event history that is based obviously on log insight from uh, VMware, which is part of the solution. But you have direct access to support. You can investigate these events, so we can have a look at that. Um, and of course, you have access to community, so you can learn and look at what is going on. So I need support, and that's for those who know EMC support, there's always a dial home thing. And EMC is always very um, encouraging to say, please make sure we are connected to your system. Because if something goes wrong, we can proactively come and send you a spare part, um, a replacement. So um, this is one of the key things. And those customers I spoke to in the past who have EMC um, and have that experience, they say, it's really in the industry good, a very good and reliable service that EMC can offer. So this is where you can access that. You can look and contact um, EMC support, um, open a support request, um, and so on. So now we are looking at one of the events. This demo was recorded already a few weeks back um, or months back when we just launched in February um, the system. Um, and the solution. So what you see is very generic events, but obviously in your environment there would be something showing up that is more relevant. But the most exciting thing for me is now where we are looking at how you extend the functionality. And this is the, the beauty of that. So you see already Evo Rail is there, vSpecs Blue Manager. Um, and this is the initial setup. But what happens next is that you can go to the marketplace um, and look at what else you can do there. So if you look at the top, um, there is a few extra tabs. And this is what comes in addition. I will be talking about these topics in more detail. Cloud Array, Recover Point, and vSphere Data Protection. So vSphere Data Protection, you say, well, that comes natively with, with, um, with VMware anyway, right? Yeah, but it's based on Avermar from EMC. And we can offer something if you have in your company um, data domain or other more, you can connect that. So you have that uh, well connected. If something goes wrong, and we know in IT things go wrong, something fails, something is broken, somebody unplugs a cable, um, you have an easy interface to identify where to go. If you have like three or four of these appliances, it might be tricky, right, to find the right component that needs maintenance. So can you can blink uh, the lights to make sure you find the right appliance, uh, the right component to be plugged out, um, or even our service um, who can come there to take care. Of course, you can generate uh, the necessary backup files and everything to, to go on. So this is basically a short demo of um, the vSpecs Blue, how you set it up. Um, I hope you like it. No? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hearing the lady next door, so let's make sure they know we are here too. Yes! yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So, what we were just showing you is the VSpecs Blue Market, and for those who are at the back and haven't seen it maybe on the video, um, just to reiterate, there is a Blue Manager, you get support depending on which level you need. You get 15 VMs protected with the appliance already, so it's a license included. Um, even though you need to install it, it's already included. So you, you have protected it. Um, vSphere Data Protection Advanced is included, obviously, um, with the idea to, if you have EMC data protection systems already in your house. And EMC Cloud Array is maybe one of the things that not a lot of people know yet. And there is a marketplace for partners. So if you are a partner or if you're somebody who is thinking about what can we do on the Polish market, you can even put your solution for customers who are looking for the simplified solution in the market um, inside there. So talk to us if you're interested to participate in the program. Okay, so, sorry, any questions? No? Okay, so the vSplex Boom Manager gives you access to all that. Um, and as mentioned, one of the key things is really um, EMC gives you the full support if you register and connect um, to our support, uh, which makes a big difference for a lot of customers and who like that. Um, maintenance and upgrades can be done automated. Like one of the 
those things that people are looking for simplification. Your iPad, are you installing something on your own? Typically, maybe you have the automated thing already inside. Similar approach. You can have that even on that way if you want to give that control to us. So these are all those things that come with it. I was talking about the support already in detail, I think. Uh, we can jump over that. So we can focus on um, the components that come in addition. Support, just quickly, you can have from basic um, to the premium support, depending on what you need, right? And what you want to pay, of course. Um, so the point I was already stressing is, um, the integration with uh, vSphere Data Protection is about the idea um, that you can, for example, integrate directly with a data domain device, which is like a deduplicated um, disk recovery uh, backup target, and uh, which allows you to have, because obviously, like if you are using any kind of uh, backup inside the appliance, what happens if the appliance breaks? Well, you're lost. <laughs> so you need some kind of recovery target. And this is one of the options, um, how to do backup and recovery with EMC. If you have maybe one of those bigger customers, a branch office, you might be having vSpecs Blue in that place, but in your headquarters, you're having this data domain target that's nicely integrated. You can um, use that for a backup job. The other thing is, and that's fairly interesting because we have a lot of discussions about this footprint and uh, when Cormac will be talking about vSAN, vSAN is cool and great. Um, in the specifications of vSpec Blue today, there are only six terabyte uh, capacity basically, which is not little, but in some cases it might not be enough, right? Um, so there are two ways how to do that, depending on your scenario and where you're coming from. Um, one is, obviously, you can use any IP-connected storage in that environment too, sure. Um, you can add a system from EMC or you know, a virtual appliance. Um, but one of the offerings that comes with it is that you extend it, because more and more customers are looking, and this is about the disruptions you have been talking about, is you are using cloud storage already. And you can integrate that with, for example, a branch office that might not have such a strong connectivity, that this connects to any storage cloud, cloud storage provider, but you have like a one terabyte cache on site and provides that through SIFS or NFS. So meaning like even if you have several <coughs> branch offices, a headquarter that might not even have a vSpace Blue, you can use that same access just through native uh, file protocols to extend your file sharing properly in that environment. So this is a pretty cool thing, I believe. Um, you can test drive it. It's an appliance, obviously. Um, it's not only for vSpec Blue, but with vSpec Blue, there comes a license for one terabyte and 10 terabyte cloud storage. Of course, the cloud storage that you get from Amazon or T-Mobile or whoever you choose, we, we don't sell you that, right? You need to get that from them. But maybe you have it already, so it's just the connection you do. And the next thing I want to stress, and as mentioned, for this we have the VLABs uh, outside in the area with the refreshments. Um, you can look at Recover Point for virtual machines. Who knows Recover Point already? One, okay, okay, two, three, four, five, wow. Okay, there are more. Um, so there are a lot who don't know it yet, so apologies to Mache and everybody else who knows it already. The idea is really to have like a video camera Right? Recording, 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 and you can go back at any time. But does that help? Maybe, maybe not. Um, the idea is, of course, to have initiated stamps and snapshots. Does it help if I have a multi-tier application like Oracle together with the front end and some kind of middleware? Maybe not. Well, RecoverPoint is a proven technology that EMC has brought as an appliance, which is available already for a long time as a virtual edition, and now we have integrated it 
into the sphere. Okay? And with all these great functionality to do continuous data protection um, on a VM granular level. So some of you might have been looking or talking about VVOLs. Okay, one at least. Um, so if you are looking at VVOLs at some point, um, ask yourself the question, what benefit will it have today? I'm sure it will have great benefits in the future, but one of the things that you get here is really a VM granular and uh, data protection that you do from inside vSphere. And that's what I want to show you now. So we have another demo to roll, but this is the nice thing is you can as well do it live on your own outside. You will get an extra gadget um, apart from the questionnaire that when you return that one. So um, feel free to do that. If, because we have limited seats, you don't get your chance today, contact one of us and we will provide you a session where you can do it at home in, a, in an environment that is secure and that will not uh, bother you. So let me roll that little demo here that we have pre-recorded for you. So what you see here is the vSphere web client. Wow, exciting, right? Ooh. Well, but the point is down here. There are plugins and we want to protect a machine and we choose um, synchronous replication. So it allows you synchronous replication. Recover point gives you always the choice, synchronous, asynchronous, depending on the requirements. So we add and we need to create a target virtual machine um, and we need to tell where that is. So we're choosing that, that synchronous replication. David, one question, because you, uh, you mentioned we have both. Uh, I, I wanted also to, uh, to uh, emphasize that application consistency is important in this, in this solution. We have many customers, we uh, joined our forces to deliver whole solution from application to, to hardware and storage and replication. And for example, uh, you probably sometimes use uh, in-post patch commands <laughs> made by so these parcel boxes. And they decided to go to, uh, with recover point uh, uh, just to have uh, Oracle uh, Oracle databases uh, application. Sorry, uh, Oracle databases consistency. This is one thing. Another thing is this synchronous asynchronous. David, uh, why should I use asynchronous if I have synchronous and it's already paid? So it depends on the customer. Who is using synchronous replication in this data center? Why? <laughs> That's a good answer. Who is using asynchronous replication? <laughs> Nobody? Okay. So do you have disaster recovery? <laughs> <laughs> Who is doing backup? <laughs> okay, there are more. Oh, I was afraid now. <laughs> so, you know, like, I have a really huge customer in the logistics uh, based in Czech Republic with one of their main data centers. And last year when we met them, and we were talking about, like, what we do, integration and things like that. Um, they told us they stopped doing synchronous replication for the majority of their systems. Why? Because 99% of the issues are not related to what? A f disaster, but logical mistakes. Maybe human ones or anything else. So they realized that um, the effort to go back to a stable state um, is much more easier when they do asynchronous replication. So you have the choice, um, depending on your environment, on the application, of course, as well, um, you can decide which one um, you choose. And in fact, in this demo, what we are showing is um, that you build even a consistency group. What Krzysztof was referring to, um, you might have built an application, and in this demo that we skipped in the sake of time, um, there is, um, in the beginning, there's being shown on EMC, Extreme IO, Flash Array, building a new, um, a new three-tier application. And in fact, in this portion of the demo, we are showing how we protect that. And we can decide and switch even, um, like we originally started synchronous replication, but in the operations, we noticed, oh, every week we have to roll back because there is some logical ha error happening. Right? 
and we can switch to asynchronous or the other way around. Um, you have an application that you started because it was in development with asynchronous replication, okay? Because for a developer, it makes a lot of sense to have asynchronous replication or even on demand, right? So here we showed we have another replica um, being built. Um, we chose where to store it, where to have this uh, protected VM being replicated because obviously we might not want to have it replicated on the same system, right? For just logical mistakes, that's perfectly fine. But if you want really to protect from physical failures, um, you want to go to the other side. So if we go, so we are protecting this other part, adding it to the consistency group. And what is a consistency group? It is about keeping things together consistent with the various components that build one. In this case, we chose that we want to do it asynchronously, um, having like a five second interval. Um, not saying that this is the only interval you can go back, because in a moment you will see we will recover from a test, a test scenario, meaning like similar, who knows site recovery manager? Okay, a few, who is using it? Okay, there are a few as well, great. Um, are you happy with it? Yeah, yeah, why not? It's a great solution, it's very powerful. It goes well beyond what you can do with Recover Point for virtual machines. You can use the Recover Point appliances, of course. You might be using. If you don't, talk to our colleagues from EMC Data Protection Team. They will be happy to show you the benefits. But if you have a smaller setup, a smaller scenario, a branch office you want to protect, that's the way to go. It's the end granular. You can choose those machines you want to protect. You can build consistency groups where you need several virtual machines to be in sync in the sense of like being protected, independent if it's asynchronous or synchronous. And in the end, once the protection has started, I can go back to any time, okay? So I have like, for example, this five second intervals and I can go to whatever I want. So I want to do um, a test um, and go back in this case, we are still protecting one more of these three uh, parts of the application. So before I would fast forward, this is going to be quick because it's a who did that demo. He um, accelerates through these steps to make sure that you see. So what is happening is here again, just a repetition, um, choosing the target, choosing the cluster, choosing the data store. Um, where to store um, it, and for example, for the asynchronous, he has a separate data store, for the synchronous, a different one, um, depending on the requirements, obviously, that you have. And once this is finished, we have all protected. It's built, a new um, replica is coming up here, and so what is now is, it's showing as well, and integrated in the web GUI. Um, you have it all protected, you have the shadow, VM, let's call it like that, or this replica VM, and it is protected and it is active, showing us here. So you see it all, you don't need to go anywhere else, it's inside vSphere, and if we were jumping to the C Sharp client that you are all familiar with, it was just for the demo to have a quick look at what has changed in the tree and what is new there. So in this case, um, we are doing a, a bookmark. So I mentioned like, apart from this five second interval, for example, that we did when asynchronous, um, bookmarks are something else. We are doing now, before we do install a patch. Let's do a bookmark, right? So we have a state to return. What's different to a snapshot from VMware? Well, I can do a bookmark for the whole group. Thank you. <laughs> you get a gadget. <laughs> Whatever the answer was. <laughs> so of the whole application together in, in this group, right? So we create a new bookmark and we have a consistent snapshot or a consistent replica and we know where to go back. This is about this video recorder function, right? Um, like when those of you who are my age or a little bit older maybe uh, remember when you had like video systems, you were kind of going back and forth and, and looking for that. And this is where we were showing that, like you have this journal and you can pick any time that you know is the right one to return to that. And in this case, we are returning 
um, as a test and uh, to a remote site. Oh, this is even the failover already. Um, so this is basically the same. If you do a test or a failover, the difference is um, a test typically you do in an isolated environment, a failover you would do into um, um, a, a system that you want to start up and running. So that was a little bit of recover point for virtual machines. The best thing is, do you need to pay anything if you want to look at it? No, exactly. Who, who tested it already? No, nobody? So after you go home, go to emc.com slash get recover point for VM or something like that. <laughs> and uh, you can download it for free. It doesn't cost a dime as long as you don't need support. Okay? Yes, please. One more thing. The important part is, uh, I really believe, as a former customer of VMware and EMC, and I really wanted to work for VMware or EMC, and somehow it happened <laughs> in Federation. Uh, the one important thing, uh, because the, the session was covering respect to group, this is included, for sure. Exactly. So, including support, of course, right? So, I just wanted to make the point in the Federation, um, there is the choice for you. There might be customers who don't like EMC so much. I can't understand. Um, but obviously, I'm biased. Um, somebody's paying my salary and uh, my loan and um, uh, make sure that my children have something to eat. It's the same for you guys, I'm sure. Um, but if you want to have a, a good sleep, I can definitely recommend some of those solutions. And depending on what your environment is and your requirements, and we have heard that there are people with Site Recovery Manager in place, you might look what is the best constellation for you. So you have the choice. So this is exactly the point. One last thing, because probably sometimes we, we hear the questions. We are not fighting with, uh, each other with uh, SRM and recover point for VMs. <laughs> No, exactly. It's about what you need, right? Um, and this is where, and I mentioned, like, if you use Site Recovery Manager, you can use EMC anyway. So we have been talking about uh, respect Blue Market. Um, you know what to get there, Cloud Array as an um, interface, uh, a cache for your cloud storage, um, which basically is file storage. So you have local file storage. You don't need to install a file appliance, a NAS appliance in a small location. You can use it even as just a pure file storage, even not connecting to the public cloud as kind of a like a hidden uh, functionality. Recover point for virtual machines, you can have a look at it um, in the VLAB and, and you get a gadget that was uh, instructed to remember, re repeat and repeat. Um, and what is this vSpecs Blue appliance? Because you wanted to make sure we talk about vSpecs Blue, which is part of that solution, is where can you use it? Basically anywhere um, that the business needs it. And we're talking from small customers to bigger customers. And depending what they need to do um, in their environment, you can have virtualized environments, obviously, uh, desktops, um, remote offices. Um, these are the typical things I see it. Um, but of course, it doesn't stop there, because on top of that, there are running business applications um, and, and more stuff like test and development. In fact, it's a great appliance for teams where you have like research, development, guys who need like their own hardware because they want to manage it on their own, blah, blah, blah. Well, we know it in IT, that happens. And rather have it under control because obviously vCenter is still there, login site is there. You can make sure that you know what's going on in their environment, okay? So this is just like um, to repeat how it's built. And let's move now for those who have more than 500 VMs to a solution that we have built over the past two years based on the Federation technologies, as we call it, um, which is basically um, the enterprise hybrid cloud. Um, you will get those links. So if you're interested to learn more on either the vSpecs Blue solution or any of uh, what we have been talking about. So coming back to like the next level, okay? So we were talking a lot about infrastructure replication and so on. But I see more and more customers who even don't want to talk about how I build that, that I can operate my software-defined data center. And that's where EMC came up with 
Um, we have built a solution. We put 40,000 hours of engineering into that. Um, and we are giving it now to you. If you are interested, we can give you within four weeks a system that is up and running and gives you a self-service portal. Well, you will say, oh, I can do that on my own with OpenStack, right? Can you? In four weeks? <laughs> exactly, that's the question. Um, and we have, and Carol might be talking about uh, briefly the experience we did here in Poland with the university, and they were talking at the EMC forum last, last year. We tried, we tried really hard, and we wanted to get them there. But in the end, we came to that solution that we have built, that we have pre-tested, that we engineer, that we support for you. And I will be sh shortly showing you um, so the, the idea is to have a self-service portal and to go um, to a transparent pricing, um, to have like this brokerage service. Who of you guys have been dressed by Microsoft talking about their public cloud, Azure? Okay, no surprise. I'm meeting more and more customers. And who is using Azure of those two or three that raised their hand? Nobody yet, okay. Come on, get right. <laughs> but we have, we have our customers who want to use it because they get it, all right? Um, how many times? Yeah, okay. So the magic is there, and uh, I have no more than 15 minutes. And okay. I, I have just a reminder that, yes, it's 15 minutes left. Thank you. So how do we do that magic? Well, we just put together a lot of cool technology, right? And we had some engineers who were so excited that they built, built the best of the best, right? Um, but in the end of the day, we know not always you need the best of the best, um, but you need to have something that works too, end to end. And that's the idea. So virtualized, this view, you have two platforms. And this is where EMC has started to build um, a solution that helps independent of the storage vendor to integrate that into the automation piece. Um, with VMware's solution on operational management, so we sent, we, uh, um, what's the right name now? We realize operations and uh, automation, that is the self-service portal, um, and of course the financial transparency, we realize business. Thank you. Um, and extending it to the public cloud. So you know that uh, VMware has now as well a data center in Germany, um, providing vCloud Air services, and this is what we built. Oops, and what's happening with my slides? Apologies, this was too fast. Um, and what I just wanted to stress is what you get if you look at enterprise hybrid cloud from EMC together with all the components that we have in the family, is we integrate and test it, you don't get just the software, you don't get just you know, a list of items. We have pre-tested it, it's working together, and it will work within a month, less than a month. You get service templates, okay? And I will show you a few of that. And last but not least, um, there are workflows integrated that combine these things. And this is one of the points that I wanted to make, uh, to show you is, the thing what I mentioned about VMware 10 years ago, not caring about disaster recovery, right? Um, there was no SRM at that time. And I know Krizek at his former company, he has built his own disaster recovery based on the uh, EMC. I, 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 when he told me at that time, I told him, well, I don't care really if it's EMC or something else. Yeah, this was like, you are EMC enough oriented, so let's focus on the VMware solution. Okay, and backup and recovery. And the point was, um, this, these are things, for example, vCloud Director, how well is the backup and recovery thing sold there? Very well. Very well by now? How was it three or four years ago? Uh, we didn't use the VMware products for backup, sorry. Yeah, but there was, even, even if you use something external, it meant a proper effort, right? It worked, worked the best way. Yeah, but to build it, how much time did it take you? Uh, one week. One week? Wow, I want to talk to you afterwards. Okay. <laughs> Impressive. He's expensive. He's expensive. Okay, I will pay a lot of beers, no problem. <laughs> um, business application provisioning and platform as a service. So um, apart from this foundation, 
we build more. And as mentioned already, it's built on the, the Ember component. Why do you see, for example, we center operations here and not we realize operations? Is because this is an engineered solution and sometimes it is not as fast as the new releases are there. Why? Because we want to have you a car that works, not a car that is in the workshop all the time. Okay, so we take off that load to engineer it on your own. You are a service provider, you have a lot of skills, but not everybody in the room might be as lucky because I'm sure everybody mentally in the room has the capacity to do it. But if you are an expert in backup, if you're an expert in storage, if you are an expert in networking, um, there is only limited time. So we can take off that of your shoulders and we see more and more IT managers asking us and if you are not going to embrace it, they will look for other people. So my experience is better know what's coming <laughs> and be prepared than like getting by surprise by your manager telling you, hey, by the way, um, have you heard about that? And we're going to buy it. <laughs> okay, so be prepared um, and embrace it because it gives you new flexibility. It gives you more value as well internally at the business. So this is the foundation, but when I talk to customers, nobody is only foundation. They always need protection, either backup or site failover or whatever. So we offer that modules. A lot of you guys are using either Microsoft, Oracle, SAP. We do have extra add-ons that you can choose to have integrated. And then when uh, Krishik was talking about his experience uh, checking in at the hotel, um, but you were talking about this fuel station. Um, you didn't talk about the hotel, in fact, right? Yeah, you, you the story it? was about Soundgarden, which is a uh, totally uh, self-serviced hotel, of course, not totally in terms of, you know, eating in the restaurant, but all uh, processes are automated. And to do this automation, I mean, uh, because a lot of you probably live here in Warsaw, I'm from Wrocław, so I need, I need to stay in the ho at the hotel, and the hotel is automated enough to do everything uh, by yourself. To, uh, to book, to uh, check in, to print the invoice, and the, the, the room is very highly automated, even in terms small. of uh, Wi-Fi. Sorry? And it's small. Yeah, it may be small, but you know. Uh, let, let's imagine. It didn't like a lot of hours to sleep there anyway. Yeah, but uh, I like this table. <laughs> you can, you can have. Anyway, I, what I wanted to say is um, a, a, a method of delivery, for example, a Wi-Fi password. You do it through your TV, and you, it's, it's, it is generated by the system without any, per, any human um, uh, intervention. Intervention. And you have dedicated network in, 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 in which room, in each room. Therefore, what you, uh, the way how you can achieve such possibility is uh, the way how, how and how uh, flexibly and how efficiently you de develop your applications. Exactly. And this is the idea where we bridge for those legacy and the green and the dark blue or uh, pink uh, or whatever this color is. Um, where we start doing like these kind of businesses where we see more and more traditional businesses if it's a bank, if it's manufacturing. I was just at a company who is doing hydro power stations and they have like GE with their engines. They have a lot of data from sensors so they want to go further. We can connect to the public cloud if it's vCloud Air or vCloud Power Service Provider maybe in the room. Um, and of course about security that we um, address with our RSI um, technologies, not only the authentication. I will not spend a lot of time in the details on this because this is um, just a more detailed um, scenario of what's inside there. You can as well explore in the VLAB, so this is as well available and the VLAB is really great. But I will show you something in the VLAB that you don't see on your own if you don't know where to go. Okay, so we are just wrapping up um, because like I think we are in between lunch, right? Or something like that? Uh, you're just standing between uh, lunch, <laughs> us and lunch.
in Perfect. two minutes. In two minutes. Wow, <laughs> that will be a very quick demo. Who wants to see the demo on Enterprise Hybrid Cloud? And I asked yeah. that David to show this part uh, not totally oriented on IT or infrastructure services, like during latest IT Hero session, Carol showed us uh, this infrastructure part. And I mean, who, who has seen that IT Hero session? Nobody. So. <laughs> so, Sorry. so you, you can obtain it from, from our website. However, exactly. uh, Carol was focused on on infrastructure services. I asked I asked David to deliver this part. Besides this, go for so obviously you see we customized it already for the new member user group. You have your own cloud. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, I can't, how we can log in? Uh, <laughs> I sent you the link. Oh, perfect. Uh, the public IP is there. <laughs> and you can do it outside. Yes. So feel free. Um, so obviously what there is, and we have different users. So if you access the VLAB demo, um, you will have the possibility to use other users that that one I used. If you remembered that um, user, I was just typing field at vlab.local. Uh, um, you will see that service catalog too. Um, obviously, this is not documented in the lab guide, and uh, the password is, of course, uh, a very tricky one, so you will figure out once you have the password for the other account. Um, but what I wanted to show you, and this is one of the key things um, that happens and that we get asked already by customers is, like, I don't care about the virtual machine. I want to create an environment um, well, of course you care about the virtual machine, but not in the sense of like, this is relevant to your business. If you're delivering parcels, how much does the person who is delivering the parcel to the customer care about if you need a virtual machine to have that parcel delivered? They give a shit about it, right? So this is the idea like you can create or campaign analytics, marketing department, they don't care about virtual machines. They want to have a system where they can set up quickly uh, before Christmas a new campaign and they need to analyze the behavior maybe of last year and they have the data there. So um, this is where we are extending our solution. So talking about um, data lakes where Hadoop comes in. Who has been looking at Hadoop already? Okay, <laughs> especially our service providers. Yeah, and they, they have a lot of, you have a lot of data, right? where you can look at how happy are my customers, why are they leaving to another, because I have crappy connectivity with that one, or why are suddenly coming from the other service provider others to us um, because that is happening. Okay, and this is what uh, Krizek mentioned. We have, of course, the core things around infrastructure that is in there. And last but not least, a little thing that is working in that lab, if you turn on the right virtual machines and you know which um, service uh, vCloud director instance you need to start, just as a hint, wink, wink. Um, and, and who is interested, come and see me or see Carol. We will show you the trick how to do it. You can deploy, um, in this case, it's really a demo one, um, a small virtual machine into the public cloud. So this is the idea of that solution that it opens you the possibility to give self-service portals and when you study the lab guide, um, you will see that with each um, icon, typically, not in this case, there is a small um, sign, either check mark, telling you a green one that is inside. Okay, and what I select now, and in fact, because I didn't expect that we will manage to get that far, is I use pay as you grow, uh, and that's my public account, and I can submit it. And then I have a virtual machine that is up and running in the public cloud. It's our great service provider in Poland, yeah. for example, <laughs> as a target. First client. First client. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me who said that. <laughs> OK. So that was basically it for the demo. We could do more. Um, we will be happy to share more. Um, just to wrap up, um, Carol will be happy to ask uh, to, to share his experience uh, with uh, proof of concept we did with Polytechnica Wroclawska um, that I mentioned before. I think we are running out of time, Carl, to say anything Let's more. Let's postpone it. And maybe on the next IT Heroes, he can talk about it. Um,
The idea really is it's an end-to-end -end, um, solution. Um, you have the choice. You can do it with us. Um, you will save a lot of time um, if you go to the Cloud Daily from the VMware user group. Um, what I recommend to 